Yo, what's going on guys? This is Wynn and welcome back to another Elder Scrolls Blades video. Today we're going to take a look at the top 5 good things in the game and I'm going to do a follow up video after this that's going to be the top 5 bad things in the game. So I want to just put it all out there, see what's working, what's not working and just do a nice deep analysis of Elder Scrolls Blades. What made me want to do this was the fact that it was announced at E3 last year for like 10 months. A lot of us waited with anticipation, with bated breath. We had no idea what this game was going to look like, what it was going to, uh, how it was going to feel, what was going to be in it, what you're going to do, and now all of a sudden it's funny, right? I waited so long to figure out what was in the game. Well, now I've just played it for the last seven weeks, so now I know a lot of, like, about everything about the game so why not take a look at it now that we have the full picture you know of course there's more to come like the arena and visiting people's towns and all these features that we've yet to see but 95 percent of the game is right here in front of us and i've spent the last seven weeks playing it so let's take a look at what is good and like i said then we'll do a video about what is bad so i know a lot of people have focused on the bad things but there are some pretty awesome parts to this game as well for it being a mobile title so the very first thing I want to talk about is the depth so when I say depth I'm not talking about you know like the jobs and the quests because that is a little bit lacking but just the depth in terms of equipment I think it's pretty awesome that you can have glass dwarven daedric steel uh, elven like almost all of the armor types that you see in traditional Elder Scrolls games were put into this game that we see right here in front of us and on top of that we not only have armor weapons shields we're eventually going to have three jewelry spots so we've got two rings a necklace there's a ton of customizability here where if you get a good loadout there's so much depth to be had in terms of Let's, let's just count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different things. Each thing can have up to like five enchantments is the most I've seen. If you look at this helmet I have, which is absolutely crazy, we've got a max health enchantment, increased healing effects, bashing resistance, slashing resistance, and frost resistance. Five different enchantments on one piece. If I were to try to have five different enchantments on nine different pieces, I could be rocking, rocking 45 different enchantments in my gear alone, which is really, really awesome to me. So that level of depth, plus, like I said, you could have Orcish, and then I've got an Elven Longsword, I've got a Dwarven Helmet, and then I've got uh, like Dwarven Boots, you could have Light Armor, Heavy Armor, there's so much just in terms of what your character can wear that uh, I really haven't seen or haven't seen beaten yet by another mobile game. So this is like a big uh, A plus for Elder Scrolls Blades in my book by far. Plus you can temper all of these. Each thing has its own rarity too, you know, like green items, blue items, purple items. Then you've got legendary, but then even within legendaries, there's mythical, sublime, magnificent, exemplary. There's just a ton of stuff that goes into uh, you're, you know crafting your character and what you're gonna wear so that's the first thing that I want to talk about and I don't think they should change any of that that right there is like pure Elder Scrolls I know we memed on that a few videos ago but this right here actually encompasses I think what it means to be an Elder Scrolls game the second thing I want to talk about really quickly uh, the second good thing is the town and I think that the town system works pretty well you're right when you start off and everything is destroyed uh, rebuilding it actually does feel pretty dang good. I know when I walk around my town, uh, I am like proud to have buildings and not just piles of rubble. And I also think it looks really good too. Obviously the customization is a pretty uh, key component here. The fact that my town might look way different than somebody else's town. I think that's going to really, uh, that's kind of a dark horse perk. I think the, 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 the fact that all these towns look different. We, we don't know yet because we can't visit people's towns yet, but once we do, and I go visit somebody else's town, and I'm like, oh crap. Like, they decided to lay theirs out completely different. That's gonna be a really cool thing. So the town itself, and that sense of progress you get from going into the abyss, going into dungeons, going to jobs, getting resources, coming back, building that first smithy, it actually feels pretty good. And that's the core part of the game that they really tried to get right, and I think they did a decent job of it. Uh, like I said, the town, it just feels really good and when you walk around have everything built like this this just looks awesome this building that i have right here is like incredible uh definitely not something you see in every game uh and, and like i said the the path that is that you have to take to build all this stuff does feel pretty rewarding even though uh it is kind of long and arduous at times but anyway 
So the third thing that I want to talk about, it's actually kind of two things in one. One is the immersion that I get when I play this game. I actually really get a sense of being transported into this world, even if it's just for five or ten minutes every time that I play. And the second thing that goes with this whole point is the soundtrack and the music that wraps you into this Elder Scrolls experience. Those two things together create an incredible sense of immersion. Going into this town, hearing the sound effects, you know, when you put on headphones, it just kind of transports you even more into the game. I also, like, I also uh, I find myself just walking around the town taking a look at everything like just the, the detail is incredible the stained glass window here uh, kind of this like depth effect you get when you approach things even the small details like the flowers and the grass on the ground um, outside of the smithy that's like one of the things too that really makes this feel like a much more polished world and a lot different than uh, you know if there was none of these bushes none of this greenery uh, like if this fire wasn't here you know if everything had like a more blocky feel to it it really wouldn't feel as like it was a whole different world and even if I do play for only five or ten minutes when I put on headphones and I I jump in I really feel like I am here in this town uh, and then the soundtrack on top of that like I said I might not look like it on the surface but I'm a, I have a huge appreciation for video game music and the Elder Scrolls music especially I absolutely loved Jeremy Sewell's work in Skyrim um, I have playlists with those songs in it for like just relaxing or playing some music like throughout my apartment even though Skyrim came out eight years ago I still listen to that music to this day even though I haven't played Skyrim in probably over a year now the music is one of the things that really sticks with me and this Elder Scrolls Blade soundtrack track is on par if not better than a lot of the other Elder Scrolls Blades music it actually was really really well done so hats off to everybody that worked on the soundtrack uh, that is one thing that I think is like the best parts of this game early on here is definitely the music for sure so next up uh, the fourth thing that I want to talk about that I think the game does very well is the skill trees I think they've done a way they've done it in a way that they can always add more skills but the the base amount of skills that we have uh, right off the bat is pretty dang decent I like how it's broken up between spells perks and abilities I know that in oblivion if looking back at the most recent titles of the Elder Scrolls in oblivion they had a much different skill system than they did in Skyrim which had more like constellations and you would upgrade throughout the different trees versus the Elder Scrolls blades which had um, you know kind of more like preset abilities that you could select if you wanted to um, and then like different morphs and stuff and then you've got spells perks and abilities broken out into three different trees here so I love that with the Elder Scrolls they take a new approach with their skill trees and their uh, like abilities and, and all these different things um, with each game it's definitely not like a cookie cutter one size fits all they're able to craft a brand new experience for every different title so the fact that in the abilities tab alone it looks like we've got 4, 8, 12, 16, 17 different abilities 4, 8, 12, uh, 17 different perks and I'm guessing it's 17 here 1, 2, 5, 7, 10, 12 yeah so 17 different uh, these of these spells perks and abilities that's 51 total plus each one has multiple upgrades to them as well so that's like a lot of depth right off the bat for a mobile game and I was really excited when I saw this because I do a lot of build videos as you guys have seen and the fact that there's so many different combinations it's one of those things that if you tried to calculate all the different permutations of skill combinations it would literally be infinity there's so many of them uh, you know you're never gonna have the same build twice if you're just playing around with these skills so that's one thing I think is done really well about the game and the last thing too it's kind of subtle but um, something that I think you can't really appreciate until you've played the game for quite a bit of time um, you know until you get to level 20 or 30 and then you start to get a full grasp of the game uh, definitely one thing that I loved was the ability to do anything and I know you're thinking what what do you mean you can't you can't do anything in this game I mean if you wanted a sp like a specific weapon like let's say you wanted a dwarven great axe of flames with like some other enchantments and then you wanted to like temper it up to legendary from the very beginning you can do that it might take some time yeah it might you know be annoying if you have to like you know wait hours for chests or whatever you know put all that bad stuff aside we'll, we'll talk about that in the other video I'm gonna make but right now let's just focus on the fact that if I wanted to right now go out and find the materials that I need to make a steel dagger and then if I wanted to give that steel dagger poison damage and then if I wanted to temper it up to 
like epic or legendary or whatever you can totally do that and that's what i really really like about this game and that was something that was very unique to some of the other elder scrolls games when you compared them to other gaming franchises like you had the ability to go out find the raw materials take it back to the smith and craft it into something amazing and then go enchant it and then temper it up make it even stronger like i just love that you can do that um, and there's a little bit of role playing that goes along with that too so if you want to like kind of get into it and say like i'm a character that's going to only have like this type of play style or this type of weapons or whatever and i want to craft it and you know maybe be like a little bit more of like a hardcore mode um, you can do that even though it's a mobile title and it is lacking in some areas that you can do that and i really really like that about the Elder Scrolls Blades. So in summary, we talked about the depth of the equipment, all the different pieces you can have, and all the different enchantments, the sense of progress you get from upgrading the town. It really feels great to, to finally upgrade things to like the castle style, like you see here in the back, versus the wooden style, you know, versus piles of rubble, which is really what your town starts off with in the beginning. Uh, then we talked about the immersion in the soundtrack. That is a big one for me personally. The skills are really great, and then in the end, if you can craft or enchant anything to your heart's content, you can do it in this game. It might take some time, but you can do it. It is possible. So those are my five biggest pluses, the big A pluses I would give Bethesda for the Elder Scrolls Blades. But of course, don't go anywhere. My next video, probably coming out in a day after this one, will be the top five bad things about Elder Scrolls Blades. You can't have the good without the bad and vice versa. I could even do it. Uh, the top five ugly things the good the bad and the ugly but uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, definitely let me know below in the comments what you guys love about the game there's been some criticism been some negative uh, posts made not only on YouTube but also on reddit obviously the negativity is there with blades but hey let's uh, let's take a break from that for a second and just talk about the good things and you heard what mine were so I want to hear what yours are but anyway guys that's all I have for you today and I will see you next time